Hi everyone, my name's Steve Moore. I'm the General Manager of Hospitality here at Club and Angle. Today I'm here with Club and Angle CEO Bruce Christensen. We wanted to give you all an update on how the club is coping with the COVID-19 uh, impacts and what we've done with our business to try and reduce those impacts. Now Bruce, uh, you, you're standing a little bit away from me here and social distancing is something that we've had to uh, get used to here at the club. Can you give us a run through on uh, the initial response of the club to the uh, new regulations? Yeah, th yeah, sure, Steve. Um, obviously, we we sort of really went from one extreme to the other. We uh, just opened our brand new venue, the Menangle Country Club, and come off the back of a really successful uh, Miracle Mile Carnival. So it was just so disappointing to have to downsize at all. Um, but uh, what we did initially was just react to the changes as they, as they came through, and they, they were sort of very very quick. It seemed like we'd sort of make a change one day, the next day there'd be something something more to react to. But um, the staff were doing a great job of making sure we could still trade, and uh, we'd we'd had to uh, make sure we we lessened the number of patrons in the venues. We had. Uh, software there we were using to keep track of the number of people coming into the venue and these these sorts of steps but that we, we were dealing with that quite well uh then of course came the the devastating uh news that we had to close altogether and that that um that brought about a whole raft of different challenges of course for us so um we went from trying to keep staff and patrons safe to probably more worrying about um the staff welfare and uh and looking after those staff because um the, one of the immediate effects of the full closure was we had to put off our um, nearly the entire casual uh, workforce. So that was that was really difficult. They'd done a, such an amazing job for us to, to establish our reputation, and then then to have to um, stand them down was was really a difficult thing to do. Um, then hot on the heels of that, I suppose, became the realisation of just how significant the impact was going to be on us financially. And uh, we, we started to get an understanding of, of sort of no crowds at race meetings meant no, no racing revenue, uh, no hospitality at either venue, of course, meant no hospitality uh, revenue at all. And and then the, the wagering revenue, which to us is so important for the racing side of our business, uh, it became apparent it was very heavily impacted. And now we know we're, we're looking at uh, reductions of about 40% uh, of our racing revenue. So that's that's a, a massive um, thing to deal with for any business. Um, so I I think that's just something we're still going to continue to deal with in the, in the months and, and probably even years ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So some really significant impacts there. Well, on a more positive note, racing's been one of the only sports in the world that's been allowed to continue to, to, to operate. Uh, what, what, what restrictions has allowed racing to continue and, and what has that meant for the local industry? Yeah, well, p probably, ironically, the, the thing that actually, I, I think, helped the racing industry was um, the equine influenza that, that hit us back in uh, 2007. And there was a lot of restrictions that had to be put in place and protocols around the racing back in those days. And I, I think uh, the lessons we learnt there and we were able to show to government that we could put these measures in place to to keep the participants safe and uh, and by following very strict protocols and, and the club's been a leader in that regard um, with our experience there with Harness Racing New South Wales of course being the, the governing body uh, Racing New South Wales as well from the thoroughbreds um, uh, played a major part uh, working with government to make sure they were comfortable with the protocols that we had in place and they're very strict um, and it's been hard on the participants I mean we can't have owners they can't have uh, family here at the races only essential people can be here but those those protocols have enabled us to to continue racing, and that's been so important because it's it provides employment to our our area of our business in the racing side of things. But it also is the employment of the participants in the industry. I mean, there's there's twelve thousand um, people employed. Uh, either directly or indirectly in harness racing in New South Wales alone. So those people um, are continuing to get the the prize money distributed because yeah. we're racing, and and not just not just have we continued to race here, but we've also had race meetings transferred from other venues because we can follow these protocols here at the venue. So all the Bankstown meetings have been moved here at this stage. Um, the the meetings from Goulburn as well. We've had a Penrith meeting uh, transferred here too. So uh, not only are we conducting our normal meetings, but we're, we're actually bringing other meetings uh, from other venues here as well. So it's it's ensuring that that, that prize money is being distributed through the industry and that those people, while still obviously imp impacted, at least it's helping them financially to still earn, earn their living. 
uh, I, I think that's been a huge message there is, is continuing gainful employment um, for, for both our staff and the industry participants and that's something we've, we've really been focused on up at the Menangle Country Club so um, where, where we did have to uh, completely close uh, on March 23rd we managed to quite quickly turn around and, and, and repurpose a shipping container here at the track um, we've reopened that um, as a takeaway and delivery outlet uh, continuing gainful employment as I said for up to eight full time roles there. Um, we have been successful in, in uh, receiving the JobKeeper uh, payment to bring casuals back into the business which is uh, now uh, hopefully allowing us to plan for some easing of restrictions in the coming days. Yeah, so it, it's certainly sounding very positive, um, or, or much more positive at least, uh, than, than it had been. And, and as you say, the, the planning now uh, change the direction and we, we look at what we need to do to react to make sure that we can ag again operate uh, safely for both our staff and for the patrons so um uh, obviously you've got a fantastic staff working with you and, and I know you're already working on the planning for that. At the moment it's a bit of guesswork as to what we think things will look like but hopefully, um, as you say, not too far away we'll get some more definite information and uh, hopefully we can, we can be back and, and trading again up there uh, with people inside the venue rather than outside it. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much for that Bruce and uh, to all the Chamber members out there, uh, stay safe and we hope to see you here at Club Menengel again very shortly. Thank you.